everyone it is Jamie Jo right here at Madlet Musings and I'm super excited today like really excited because I have Robin Jones Gunn with me on the podcast hi Robin hi Jamie <laughs> I'm excited because I was just telling Robin before we got on that I was the first generation of mm -hmm. um readers of the Christie series where like they would release the book yeah. And then there wasn't another one written yet. Like my daughter can get them all right now. I didn't have that luxury. Yes. And you, you told me that I wasn't writing fast enough. So no. <laughs> for all of your <laughs> followers who are writers, just know that's a universal problem. If your it readers is. really like what you're doing, they'd say it faster, is. faster, faster, faster. It, is. it, is. Oh. Well, it, it was great with the Christy Miller series too. Cause okay. So I do have to tell a little background, even though we're not here to talk about Christy Miller. Um, there was a, a, a little old lady in our church who had never married and she was the church librarian and she also worked in a Christian bookstore and she knew I loved to read. So she was the one that started me on Jeanette Oak and the Christian fiction. So every time she'd come to our house, I couldn't wait because Dorothea would bring me a new book. Well, one day she brought right. me this book and it was the first book in the Christy Miller series and it had just come out. And she goes, I thought you might like this because this is actually written for your age, which was also a new thing in Christian mm -hmm. fiction at the time. And I opened it up and no joke, the girl, Christy Miller, was from Wisconsin, which is where I, I was living. And you know why the, I do. there's a reason for that. Yes. There's a reason for that. <laughs> readers, we have a mutual. Readers don't know that, but you and I do. Mm -hmm. yep. We have a mutual um, fondness for Wisconsin for multiple reasons, but mm -hmm. that was so exciting. And then I, w I love to swim. And one of the things I'll never forget is Christy Miller in her string bean green swimsuit. <laughs> and no joke, every time I went shopping for a swimsuit after that, I was looking for a green one because I wanted the <laughs> string bean green swimsuit. <laughs> wow. So... Wow. And I did finally meet my Todd, except when I met my Todd, it was years later, and we didn't like each other for the first five years of our life, so. Five years? Oh, my husband five and I, years. it was just two years. When we was first it? met, it was like, uh, go away. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And two years later, yeah. we both changed so much, and it was like, mm -hmm. you're so different from me, and that's really good, because I need, you know, the iron sharpens iron kind of thing start right. to happen, and mm -hmm. sparks do fly, and, they you do. know. Oh, 40 yeah. some years later still do but wow what a great partnership mm -hmm. so that's yes, that's where we're another at bit of encouragement someone who's like i don't yeah. know guess what you may have already met him and you just haven't I know. gotten to the point where you get it yeah. yeah yeah nathan and i were in youth ministry for over 20 years before we yep. moved on to other things and we always told the kids when they would start complaining about somebody of the opposite gender that was driving them nuts and they hate but, well Maybe you'll grow up someday and be like Nathan and I. And they'd be like, no. <laughs> but it stops their complaining really fast. They're like, yes. maybe if we don't talk about it, it'll go away. But oh. So this is fun, though. So you have a new book coming mm -hmm. out with Ravel. Tell us a little bit about it. Because it's not Christy Miller. It's a totally different concept. So let's go. Right. So the title is Tea with Elephants. And it's the first in a series that's um, called The Suitcase Sisters. So I wrote a series years ago called The Sister Chick Series about two friends that travel all over the world and different characters in each book. And there's eight books in that series. And I kept getting mail from readers. Again, you don't write fast enough. We want more Sister Chicks. Or... And I realized I had changed a lot since I started writing those books. My daughter's much older now, so I'm watching her generation and how they are navigating things. And so I just put something up on uh, social media a couple years ago and said, so um, if I did write another Sister Chicks book, where would you want the characters to go? And I had like 1,200 responses within a day. Wow. And all, they really wanted clearly for the books to be for this, you know, younger generation so that the main characters in their late 30s, 40s, kind of dealing with mm -hmm. those life issues, but send them off to some interesting place in the world and let them have an adventure and see what their life looks like compared to the rest of the world. Yeah. So um, 
I knew then that the first one had to be set in Africa because I've been to Kenya twice, but I had never written a full novel about it. I, I in mm-hmm. the Katie Weldon series, I sent her to Africa in the mm-hmm. fourth Katie Weldon book, Finally and Forever, and she goes off to Kenya. But um, oh, it was just so fun. I have a really good friend in Nairobi, and she mm-hmm. took me on a safari one time when I went, and she took me to a hotel the second trip. We went up uh, and stayed in this treetop hotel where you look down on the watering hole and the animals come at twilight. And okay. they have this like balcony area where they come with silver tea set service and on China cups serve you tea with elephants. And then that's oh my how I got the title. <laughs> yeah. That's like a dream. That would be amazing. Yep. That yep. would be so cool. Oh, I love that. And I love elephants too. Cause um, I yeah. was raised in circus town, um, mm-hmm. as you know, I and do. I remember going down to the river. It wasn't quite as glamorous where you have tea on silver and teacups. <laughs> but we'd go down to the river and the elephants would be loose and they'd be oh. in the river bathing. And it was the closest you can get to a safari in Wisconsin. But I love it, was that. So fun. it was great. I loved that as a kid. Wow. Elephants are the best. Are they still there? Uh, this is the first year without the elephants. <gasps> oh. Yeah. Yeah. The circus is kind of dying down and the elephants that they had were aging and so they've retired them and now there's kind of a whole question wow. mark around elephants and circus and treatment and all that oh, so yeah. they're just kind of yeah. separating from that which is is okay but they had this one elephant she's been there since I was a kid and I've ridden her and been slapped by her with her tail and all that <laughs> stuff so so I, I relate just slightly, just yes, slightly. Yes, you were initiated. That's for sure. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. So you have two two characters. Have we ever met these two? Are these two from the sister chicks or nope, totally new? Nope, nope, okay. totally new and really a different feel than the sister chicks, kind of because okay. the last series that I had been writing was called the Haven Maker series. There's only two books. Um, Becoming Us and Being Known. And I had hoped to do a whole series, but the publisher decided that we were done after two books. And so I, what I learned from the reader responses on those books of what they wanted was more stories that would really delve into the life issues of Mm -hmm. women in that kind of age group, the Mm -hmm. late thirties and, and the, the Becoming Us, and being known are about Christy Miller, who is now Christy Spencer, Christy, and her friend Sierra, and these new friends that show up in the Haven Maker series. And so those stories, I got to see what are these characters like in this heading toward midlife season with children and job problems and things. So that's incorporated into Suitcase Sisters. So it's a little bit of Sister Chicks, a little bit of Haven Makers, but brand new characters that, um, you know, do you feel this way, Jamie? Like I have to really like my main characters because especially when I'm writing first person and this is a little different way of doing things. And then the um, two friends one mm-hmm. of them is telling the story, but the other, okay. you have to really get to know her too. So it's kind of mm-hmm. like double work on the character's yeah. insights. But don't you feel like it takes a while till you feel like, okay, I really like this character. I don't care where they go or what they do. I just want to mm-hmm. follow them. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I found when I'm writing a book and I'm not connecting with the main character, writing the book is like pulling teeth without yeah. Novocaine. It's just painful. <laughs> And and it feels that you have to really come up with more plot and device yeah. and things mm-hmm. that make it more interesting because the characters themselves aren't really capturing your attention. Right. So I'm right. working on the second book in the series now, and okay. um, I I mean I this is this is how you can tell as a writer, can't you? Okay. You wake up and you realize you were just dreaming about that character and what she yes. was doing. <laughs> we're not yes. crazy. We're just no. that's. The imagination yep. is alive and it, uh-huh. it, it uh-huh. connects. 
Mm-hmm. I've gone yeah. to sleep and I've kind of been in that between sleep and wake mode. And then I realize I'm praying for my character. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I go through the list of people that need prayer. And then I remember this person who has got this awful thing. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> she's, we'll set her aside. She's not real. It's okay. Yeah. Lord, you don't have to waste your time on her. <laughs> Maybe me at this point. <laughs> it's it's all true. It's all true. It I'm is. right there with you. So yeah. anyways, that's yeah. the, the long answer to your question, but it's, oh, it's really a combination and it's something new. And I love mm-hmm. doing something new because there's just yes. a freshness that comes with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's awesome. So we have mm-hmm. women that are barreling down toward midlife, which is pretty much where I'm at. I might be on the tail end of that. We won't say for sure. Um, Definitely 30s in the rearview mirror. I will say that. Yeah. But what kind of issues, topics did you find yourself, especially with this new one coming out, really diving into that women can expect to read about? Yeah. With the very first book, I, well, I don't want to give a lot of it away, but the main character yeah. who's telling the story has, a, yeah. at the very beginning, a jolt of a big life change. And it's like she's not quite sure who she is anymore. Like, that's mm. what I spent all my years focusing on to be about that and to do that. And, and now that's just changed and I don't, I don't really know where I am. So that was fun to see her kind of come into the what's next, because we've all had to do that where you have to let the old dream die so that the new dream can have base to grow but because the seasons the the ground is going to be frosted over for a while or you know nothing's going to be sprouting up until that new season starts so Mm -hmm. with the the um the other character in the first book um i think i can i can tell her issue (laughs) without giving it away Okay. But I, I've heard this in so many young women. She, the second character, she and her husband married quite young. And here they are, 38. And she's asking herself, did I make a really big mistake? Like, mm-hmm. I, I, I didn't, we got married, we started having babies, we had got a house. Like, I'm not even 40. And I've hit all these supposed life milestones. And I, I, I lost myself along the way. So yeah. that's really fun for her too, because I think taking him to Africa and putting him in this place of everything sort of uncertain, it allowed their foundations to get shifted. And yeah, um, yeah that's just yeah. kind of how real life is, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It is. I'm relating to some of these things already. You're talking about them and I'm like, not that I think my marriage was a mistake, but you do kind of, you go through all these seasons oh, yes. and then all of a sudden your kids are getting older. Like my kids are just in their early teens and they're developing their own lives. And I'm sitting here going, who am I? What? Yeah. And then I realize, you know, I go through the, stop telling me what to do, honey. Like, and he's not, but you kind of get this little independent rebellious streak at 40 something years old where you're like, wait a second. I want to be me. <laughs> yeah. You and know? I, I'm it's not sure who weird. that is right now. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. what I really want to have the readers feel because mm-hmm. it is a real visceral kind of experience when it you're is. in that, especially yeah. with teenagers. I mean, it's like pre-menopause meets pre-teens. Like that's, that's, that's an explosion, explosion. to happen. <laughs> It just is. To be honest. It yes. is. Yeah. I don't know how to best say that, but it's just so that to to take to just go into these stories and be able to focus on these characters who are out of their normal situation, right. and there they are and experiencing another part of the world and saying, right. "Okay, this was what is happening. I can see it more clearly now, and this is what needs to change." Mm-hmm. And it it's a good change. And I'm, yeah. I'm happy with that. So to yeah. that's that's the kind of story I love to tell, to kind of take the, the characters on that journey. So the reader closes the book and says, thank you. That helped. I, mm. Now I see. I mm-hmm. see what's next. And um, it's through a story. That's why we write fiction, right. Jamie. That's... I know. I know. Right? 
Right. Yeah. Well, you know, it's kind of funny, too, because I was talking to a couple of friends of mine and they're like, you know, I probably should read more nonfiction, et cetera, et cetera. And I said, you know, I think there's definitely a place for nonfiction in our lives. And it's a really important place. But I said, mm-hmm. don't discount what the Lord can teach you through quality, biblically based fiction, yeah. because sometimes we learn better through story and we learn better through an imaginary experience. And all of a sudden it hits you and you're like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, that. apparently that's true because, um, let's see, God wrote a book and he put a lot of stories in there right. and Jesus came and he told a lot of parables and right. somehow that's how we learn through generations, know. you know, yeah. yeah, that's why I think it's it really is. an honor to be able to do what we do yeah. because not everybody can tell stories and not everybody can have that wisdom that God gives us to see this, this is a truth and I can kind of smuggle it into this mm-hmm. tale and the the reader will, they won't, the yeah. reader wouldn't hear it if a friend came to them and said, you should do this or you having right. problems, you know, nope. Right. But it's like, oh, the mirror, the book becomes mm-hmm. the mirror. Oh, that's a really great way of saying it. You're yeah. right. It does. It becomes this reflection back at you and you're like, oh, I can apply that. And somehow it's easier to recognize your own either insecurities or your own errors when it's a fictional person telling you, like, you don't get as defensive. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Like, if my husband tells me, here's your problem, I'm like, well, that's not your right to tell me. (laughs) But if Christy Miller says, here's your problem, like, oh, Christy, you're so wise. (laughs) (laughs) It's true. It's true. (laughs) Oh, I love it. So Tea with Elephants, and it takes place in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Um, can I ask, is it a spoiler if I ask how the two characters end up going to Kenya? Cause that's not typically on your, they are given a safari from one of the, I'm not saying their names because (laughs) there's actually something in the very beginning of the book when they first meet that, um, is a play, it it kind of connects to their names. So I don't know, but it's on the back cover. So. Whatever, okay. but they, um, the secondary character, her father-in-law, who travels a lot with his wife, gives her the this tour package of a safari okay. because um, her mother-in-law is just particular about where she goes and prefers cruises and sitting by the pool reading a book, and so she decides, I don't want to go be about wild animals and about, you know things that are so yeah. unfamiliar and yeah. so it's like use it or lose it and so uh this secondary character's husband says you know i really think you should go with this friend they've, they've been friends since they were in high school and they always okay. had these dreams mm-hmm. far away places mm-hmm. and it just life didn't go that way so here's their chance yeah. and it's yeah a gift yeah in many ways yeah in many ways yeah Oh, and what a time of reflection, too, to have two friends go off and you're on something like that. And there's so much time to think and reflect and realize yeah. how life is changing and moving and time is ticking. And, yeah, you're trying to find your find your space and your balance. So, sounds exciting. I'm excited. Yep. I'm excited. I think this is going to be great. And I love, I love the elephant angle, as I said before. <laughs> It's like an instant sell right there. Yes. Oh, but elephants are there. You know, there's something that, and I don't know if you planned this. I really don't. And maybe you did, but there's such a parallel with a female elephant and a woman going through their life. Because if you mm. learn about elephants, and I, I studied elephants quite a bit because um, I, I wrote an elephant into one of my circus novels, but um, the way they nurture. Mm-hmm. And the way they bond together as women to not only raise their own calf, but to raise the herd of calf. And if one female elephant gets out of line, there's either the risk of that. It's kind of like, here's your opportunity to get back in the circle or you're out. And there's yep. almost like this drama within female elephants and their bands in the same way that there is in human female relationships. And then because elephants have such a long lifespan, they actually go through the different 
levels of young mother, mm. middle-aged mother, to now they're the matriarch of the herd with no calves, but they're the ones that are viewed with the wisdom. And it's I've always loved the parallel of elephants to a woman and her journey as a mother, as a caregiver, and as a nurturer to the people around them. And so I just thought that was so cool when you came out with the story. I was like, oh, it's like the perfect animal to kick off a story with two <laughs> women going on a personal journey. Maybe I read way too much into that. Robin's like, oh, wow, I Jamie. No, I, I love it. I love it. And you have such a beautiful way of expressing that because there's touches of that in the book. But I, I wished I'd had your words to <laughs> add to it, to <laughs> kind of embellish it a little bit more. Because the thing that's truly amazing is the they have the largest brain and they remember, they really do remember. And they, they have no predators unless maybe uh, uh, a lion is absolutely starving. But right. there's... When I, when I went on safari and we got to drive the Jeep up so close to these wild elephants and just the majesty, they're, they're, a, yeah. um, yeah, they're, they're a different kind of feel around them than around the zebras or, around, you know, it's mm -hmm. just kind of a reverence. Yeah. Um, that's a good way of saying it. A reverence. To their their ability, their wisdom, yeah. their place in God's creation. So, yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, as you can tell, I was kind of excited about this just because of the tea with elephants part. <laughs> I love... Okay. So, here's what's really funny, Jeannie. <laughs> like, I I don't like animals. <laughs> but... <laughs> yes. But I, I use that because... When I went on the safari, I was smitten. I, mm. I mean, it's it was amazing. And so I have these two friends who their idea of, hey, well, let's let's go into all these adventurous places in the world like Italy or, you know, but they go to Africa and they're like, I don't like animals. Do you know? But it's a chance to go somewhere kind of thing. So funny. But then how yeah. they're everything's changed yeah. by the end mm -hmm. of the book and that understanding of Again, it's just when you see creation in its yeah. natural yeah. habitat, it, you're so small. You're just so mm -hmm. <laughs> humbled yeah. out. You are. And it brings such an element of honor to, if you can view it through the eyes of creation and the mm -hmm. Lord, the God being the creator, it brings such an awe-inspiring sense of yeah. awareness to the intricacy of creation like you know i think about writing a book and how much time and effort goes into creating a character mm -hmm. creating a plot etc and then you get done with it and you're like well that could have been better you know and you look <laughs> at god and he's done that with creation and instead of going well that could have been better he was like and it was good it was like That's exactly it. what it. it was supposed to be and then yeah. you look at that within nature and it's such a uh a cinematic version of who God is just yep. to watch them. I, I agree a hundred percent. And that's exactly. Yeah. It just, I had this just exactly along that line. I had this moment where I was reading in Genesis and, you know, and it was good evening, morning, mm -hmm. first day. And I realized when God created and he called it good, then he rested. And I realized looking at all the books on the shelf, that I've written. And there's some that I just to your point at the beginning of what you were saying, if you're like, well, that could have been better. And mm -hmm. I I had this moment, Jamie, I just got up and went across the room and I just touched the spine of every book mm -hmm. and I just blessed it and oh, and said, yeah. This is good. And it every different yeah. season of life you're going through when you're writing, there's mm -hmm. some that are like a little more vivid than whatever, you know, right. fill yeah. in your adjective, but that it, and I got to one book where it was almost like a little electric spark, like mm. that. I had so many problems. I had to do so many rewrites mm. and it was just time to make peace with that book. It's, yeah. it's done and, yeah. and it's good. And, yeah. and just to go on and create whatever's next. 
Mm-hmm. I love that you said that. I love that you feel that way too. Well, it is. And, oh yeah, I totally feel that way. And it's, you know, one of those things like I've, I've kind of stepped back even from my own writing and books and been like, if I can go into it with an attitude of to God be the glory, this, well, I'm not, I'm not intending to rhyme, but it's going to rhyme to God be the glory, <laughs> but this isn't my story, mm. right? This is his. Then even if I feel it's not, where I wanted it to be at the very, very end. You can't discount how the Lord is going to use it. Like the book that I just had come out, I I sent it to my editor and I said, I'm really glad I have two more books in my contract because otherwise this is my career ending novel right here. And she's like, no, it's not. I'm like, yes, it is. Right. And even now, like it comes out and you're just kind of like, oh, yay, it's here. But then you get an email from somebody who's read something And I got an email from a mother who was going through a situation with her child. And my book deals a lot with um, a character who's agoraphobic. Like she's just very anxiety driven, Mm -hmm. very doesn't want to be with people. And she runs a bed and breakfast. Like it's the worst scenario. (laughs) Um, And the mother was like, I I picked up this book ages ago on pre-order. And I just picked it up to read it as an escape from where I was at. And Mm -hmm. then I came through and the Lord was showing me ways to help minister to my child who's going through this. And I hadn't expected it. And I was like, oh, good. And there you have it. It's like the Lord going, yeah, mic drop, Jamie, (laughs) mic drop. It's my mic to drop, not yours. (laughs) That's uh, Yes, absolutely. And those letters, too, that come and are such a surprise when they say, you know that part in the book where you wrote this and this and this? I know what you meant was this and this, and that's what I'm going through, and that's what I needed to hear. And you think, I don't remember that part that I wrote. I don't right. think that's what I was ever thinking when I wrote right. that. But how alive, like, yeah, words just can yeah, be like little seeds that get in there. Exactly. That's and so then the good. Lord connects that back to his word, which is the perfect word. And yes. then everything's redeemed. <laughs> yes. Yes. so great. So great. It is. Oh, well, I could sit here and talk forever. I know. But, I love um, it. I love it. It's, it's so much well, fun. And but... you and I met quite a few, how many years ago? Five or six mm. years ago at a writer's at conference? Yeah. In yeah. Indiana? Where, Illinois. I think it was Indiana. Where? I think it was Indiana. Indiana. You were keynoting. You were keynoting. I think it was Indianapolis. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. I know, but that's that's the yeah. only time we've been in the same space and we didn't really have much of a conversation then. No. So no. I'm grateful for this. It's fun to have conversations with you and, you know, a little bit of the childhood hero right here, you know, looking at you <laughs> going, I'm talking to Robin. Um, oh. But, it, you know, it's I love to see, you know, even in my own story, I look at how the Lord links people through story. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there I was a... I think I was 15 or 16 when the first Christie book came out and reading that book that Dorothea, this little old lady gave to me and how I waited and I would ask her at church, like, when's the next one coming? Well, I'm not sure. Cause this was pre-internet, right? Oh you yeah. You know, this was the day where you didn't have to do anything wrong for marketing online, you know? <laughs> And she'd be like, I don't know. I'll just keep watching the magazines that the publisher puts out and I'll let you know. And then yeah. sure enough, she'd, I have something for you. And it was always in a little plastic, not plastic paper, brown paper mm-hmm. sleeve from the bookstore. And she'd hand it to me and she hands me one before Sunday school. And of course I didn't listen to Sunday school cause I'm like <laughs> sneak reading, <laughs> you know, but you know, I look at those times and I'm thinking if I had looked back and said to that 15 year old girl, someday you and Robin are going to sit and chat about elephants and creation. I would have been like, yeah, whatever. But I love how the Lord just brings it full circle. And yeah. all of a sudden it's like, it's story, it's relationships. And it's really all for his honor and glory. And I, that's the best part right there. It, it is the best part. And when I was writing the first Christy Miller book and it kept getting turned down by publisher after mm-hmm. publisher after publisher and it took two years before there was a publisher interested in it. And during that time, I was like, I don't know, should I give up? I'm reading it chapter mm-hmm. by chapter every week to the girls in the church youth group because my husband was a youth pastor too. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then I found this verse, Psalm 102, 18, I think. I'm really bad with numbers. But it says, let this be written for a future generation mm. that a people not yet created may praise the Lord. And I wrote it on a little card. Oh, wow. And I I put it by the 
in the window but above the kitchen sink. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, okay, what if I prayed just really big? Like, what if what if this book is finally published and it mm -hmm. and it has an effect on readers that haven't even been born yet? And and here we are, Jamie. <laughs> like you are the answer to that prayer. Lord, please let <laughs> you were born already, but I was, yeah. Here's your daughter yeah. in that season of life. Yeah. And the ways that God chooses to lead us when we just yeah. surrender it all to him, but yeah. then just kind of catch that vision like, oh, no, this is so much bigger than me, so much mm -hmm. bigger than what this little project is. God is asking me to join him in his work and do mm -hmm. something. And so I'm just going to pray for it to really be, well, then let it, yeah. then let it roll out and really right. work. And that right. first book and then the yeah. next and the next and yeah. the and I haven't stopped writing since. Yeah. It's so, it's so neat. And I'm such a, I'm such a huge, because my books go back and forth in time. I'm mm -hmm. such a huge lover of legacy. And yes. I've, I've had kind of this thing I've been doing, you know, my mom passed away three years ago and mm -hmm. my grandma passed away and just some really important women in my life have moved to heaven. And, um, I look at legacy and what they passed on, but then I've been doing like the ancestry.com thing and going oh. back. And when you start to do that, you start learning about people that are four or five generations before you. And you realize that I wouldn't be the person that I am today if my five times great grandmother hadn't settled, a true story, in a community in the eastern coast of the United States that was solely meant to foster an early church atmosphere where they could stay strong in their faith. Wow. And because of that legacy, however extreme it sounds in my mind now for current day, like what? Yeah. Um, but that legacy was passed on to generation, to generation, to generation. And then I was adopted. So I was adopted into this family. And wow. you look at how God touches people through generations, whether it's stories, books, you know, we all leave in a legacy mm -hmm. that echoes into eternity for miles and I don't think we realize that sometimes how much what we do yeah. today will still be here when we're gone and my mom's impact on my daughter's life and how I look at my daughter and she'll say things I'm like wow that's like a direct quote from mom mm -hmm. and things like that and so what just to piggyback on what you're saying is that future generation is so um important yeah and we touch it with our words. That's so good and so true and something we don't think about because we're so focused on the right here, the right now, right. as if we have right. the most original creative idea that ever came to mm -hmm. a human. And yet mm -hmm. it's it's so <laughs> much woven into our right. tapestry of our DNA and all. I had the most interesting uh, email from what message from a woman. Mm -hmm. So I do a podcast called yeah. Women Worth Knowing. And oh, my the woman who started it, Cheryl Broderson, her father was um, Chuck Smith, who started the Calvary Chapel in Costa Mesa way back. And I mm -hmm. lived in Orange County at that time and went to okay. Calvary Chapel. But Cheryl and I had never met. And then wow. we we lived on Maui for 10 years. And then we moved mm -hmm. here a couple of years ago. And someone introduced me to Cheryl. And we just hit it off because we love stories. We love telling mm -hmm. stories about women. So Cheryl has started this podcast, Women Worth Knowing. Mm -hmm. And just telling about women in history. So every Thursday we go in studio, we record these podcasts, we've got a couple hundred, you know, and you just never really know who's listening or whatever. But right. um, I had put a little thing up on social media saying, this is a really good episode, go listen to this one. And someone messaged me and said, my grandfather's great uncle adopted this woman i mean it's a complex story but sure mm -hmm. and i was just amazed because it the, that connection and then um she said that her grandfather had told her this the whole story that we did on the podcast the woman's name is svea flood and so she had learned about svea and svea's daughter aggie and that was, okay. Aggie was the girl that was adopted. So mm -hmm. point is that the uh, young woman who wrote this to me and said, I can't believe, you know, you did a podcast on her, like 
here's my connection. Wow. And then she sent me another note just this morning. And she said, when my grandmother who, uh, was kind of in the lockdown season of 2020, mm -hmm. she asked me for some books to read. And so I started giving her the Christy Miller series one by one. And she got all the way through the Katie Weldon series. It's like, just what you're saying, that full yeah. circle, like, yeah, I want to do this podcast and tell the story about this amazing woman whose life had an impact on mine. But oh, wait, her right. relative down the line yeah. and then is connecting uh -huh. her grandmother to these stories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that odd or is that God? <laughs> So that's a great t-shirt slogan right there. Is that odd or is that God? Somebody make that t-shirt. It's just like it is. this thing. It's We're so, so connected. And to we just are. like receive that as the gift yeah. that it is. That's the yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well. All right. I guess we have to say goodbye. I know. To be continued. Sad next time. To be continued. Our lives well, cross. you've got more books coming out. So we'll just have to have a sequel to I this like conversation it. with yep. the next book. So, Thanks, but for Jamie. those of you listening, get tea for a tea for elephants, right? Or tea, uh, with, tea elephants. with elephants. With elephants, yes. The elephants don't drink the tea. It's not tea <laughs> for elephants. It's tea with elephants. But you definitely want to get that book from Robin. And Robin, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank you, Jamie.